the first chance I got to write uh, was a book called Lean Six Sigma Logistics. If you fast forward now 15 years, I have used books and writing as a way to make sure that I know what I'm thinking in my own mind. And this, so the first little lesson today is that as leaders and working with a lot of organizations, I have observed that as leaders, we do not take enough time to sit and reflect and learn about things. We are so busy, go, 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 that we never stop and say, what have I learned? And I looked out and there's about 12 senior leaders and they were just staring at me and they were silent. And I was like, oh my gosh, we blew it. But it's been mountains. We've been climbing mountains in our industry. Rick mentioned yesterday, we started off as distribution. Then it went to logistics. Now we're supply chain. Those were mountains, right? We climbed a mountain, then we looked up and we went, oh, the distribution mountain isn't the mountain, it's a logistics mountain. Then we climbed the logistics mountain and we went, oh, that's, this isn't the top of the mountain either, it's the supply chain mountain. Part leaves a supplier and flows through an entire supply chain. Why does it ever stop? Why does it stop? And if you just answer that question, you're going to find the waste that exists in your organization. What did the lean community take away from this from a leadership point of view? Because now we're focused on people and we're focused on, on um, how we're going to get business results through our process changes, through our improvements, but recognizing this is about people. The first thing was is that we said, as leaders, we have to go see. I actually believe that that might have been the last mountain. I was thinking, you know, people, process, this might be it. What is there other than people and process? We all know that things are happening, but they're happening fast. Things are moving so fast that our knowledge and our management system simply have not kept up. Virtually all business decisions end up in the supply chain. So I'm 51, I've never worked anywhere but in supply chain, and I never realized that. No matter where you are in an organization, if you make a decision, the value or waste created by that decision is going to end up in the supply chain. And I went, oh my gosh, how did I not ever see that before? Friends and colleagues and everybody were going, oh my gosh, I never looked at it that way. And it was like, wow, okay, a big light bulb here for us. And so we walked up to a box in the distribution center that was in a really prime real estate part of the distribution center and that literally had three inches of dust on it. And I said to my friend, I said, let's find out about this box. And he said, well, what do you mean? It's been there for years. And I said, I know, that's the point. Let's find out about it. What, what is this box? We ended up with a book that said, you know what, this is fundamentally about how we make decisions. And it was interesting, so then I went onto the internet and I said, well, are we even training people in decision making? You would be bewildered at how little content there was. Companies that are saying, we will come and train people on how to make decisions. Recognizing though that, oh my gosh, as leaders, what is it that we get paid to do? We get paid to make decisions. We need to recognize that when you make a decision, one of two things happens. You're going to get the intended consequences of that decision, the things that you believed were going to happen, and you are going to get unintended consequences of that decision. And if you're not a systems thinker, you are going to get a lot of unintended consequences. You've got four core processes, business strategy, product life cycle management, sales and marketing, and supply chain operations. And these four core processes are not connected. And this is the business problem that we need to solve. If this is what we're trying to accomplish, then why is this not the language that we're speaking? And so you, you'd ask yourself, okay, well, if all of these different people making quantity decisions, just one of the rights, then the question is, okay, well, what are they, what are they problem solving for? What are they trying to optimize? And the answer is they're trying to optimize what's in front of them. You had a VP responsible for the right product across the business. So right product coming from suppliers, right product being built in the factory. You had another VP responsible for right time. Everything to do with time. 
If that was the case, what would need to happen for us to have a successful business? And the answer is, is that those 10 VPs would have to work together extremely collaboratively. And if they did, the results, the business results that we would achieve would be incredible.